this lab we are going to do today. Here in the programming part, you are asked to practice semaphore in Windows API and monitor in C Sharp using the templates provided for the semaphore. Here you are asked to simulate the scenario that 10 computers print on file printers. And in this monitor.cs, just analyze the scenario using a monitor for synchronization. In this source code, there are some to-do comments, so you need to read those to-dos and complete those to-dos. This is 20%, then we have the review questions, is 80%. This one is similar to the last uh, to the review question we did in the last lab. But this time, we will try preemptive scheduling algorithms and uh, last time we tried non preemptive uh, algorithms again i will create a folder to hold the files will be used today Can I hold a called lab zero file Then we copy those two templates provided. In this uh, folder downloaded from GitHub, press your shift key, right click. Actually, we don't need a uh, press shift key, just right click. Open uh, Git Bash here. Git pull update the materials go to labs lab0 file code copy these two folders Oops. go back to the folder we created today Again, we opened with uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is an example we demonstrated uh, during the lecture, and today we are going to adapt this program to simulate 10 computers print on file uh, printers. So let's open the Visual Studio developer command line. And go to today's folder. Type CD. Right click. You see there are two folders, CS and Win. First, CT into Win. You see this is same folder C here. Now the we use same for to represent the resource, the shared resource, as we are asked to demonstrate file printers. So change to file means uh, file printers and 10 computer so the thread used to simulate the computers right now we scroll down to see anything we need to uh, modify in the thread block as a printer you need to uh, simulate you are printing something
Now in the main program, first we create semaphore with initial and max uh, count for this uh, max sam count here. When it failed, we, s we output create semaphore error. When it succeeded, we need to uh, print something so we can just uh, copy this one. create semaphore successfully to represent so many uh, computers uh, to represent so many uh, printers how many printers is this one right Max sam count. So we can put max sam count put it here. Then we create ten work uh, threads. Actually, these threads are used to simulate the ten computers. Right? What you can consider these are ten printing. Uh, jobs. Let's say create threads successfully to represent ten computers. Oops, to uh, represent this number of computers. So we change it, this parameter to the number of computers. So it's a uh, max. So what's the, the number? It's a thread count. You can also add some number to represent the sequence. For example, this step one, this one step two. Then wait for all threads to terminate in the main program. Once they all terminated, we close the thread and the sum of all handles. Okay, in the thread. What we are going to do here, they can wait for 10 seconds. The unit is uh, milliseconds, so 10,000 milliseconds is uh, 10 seconds. Or we may use uh, zero to represent weight infinitely. We can find uh, the usage of this function wait for a single object. The program is from this link as we demonstrated during the lecture. Here, wait for a single object. The timeout parameter, milliseconds, Oh, this is a latest uh, wait for a single object. We want to find that uh, wait for a single object. Here, okay, when I click that one, it'll come to this one. So this is not what we want. We want to find that uh, wait for a single object. And when you check this one, Zero second timeout interval. You would use zero. So how to could we uh, wait infinitely? This uh, wait for a single object. Here we only have a register. 
let's copy and search this uh, function wait for single object here the milliseconds the parameter if we want to wait for infinitely we use this uh, infinite not zero zero you, you will not wait if it's zero the function does not enter wait state if the object is not signaled or the resource is not available All right, now let's just leave it like this, wait for 10 seconds here in this uh, thread block and for each printing job here we can say uh, thread got the resource what's the resource? the printer right? and the thread is printing Now, how long does a uh, thread print? Usually, we, we may use a random number. Here, we suppose it, each uh, printing job takes uh, five seconds. This is not a good simulation. In a good simulation, you may use a uh, random numbers. Once it's done, release the sample so other computer can use the printer. Released the computer, let's say, or finished uh, the printing. Okay, let's just uh, modify it like this and then run it to have a look. You are suggest to change this uh, time to a random number even though it's, it's not required. How do you generate a random number with the Windows API? Then type uh, Windows API random number. Here you can use this uh, RAND to generate a random number, but this one is included in this uh, standard lab.c in the C uh, runtime. Uh, here you can see an example to generate a random number like this. Usually before you use it, you are asked to set a seed. So we can uh, copy this head file. Then in the main function, we can set the seed here. Put, put it like this oh, now in each thread we can generate this uh, time use this random function here now you just quit directly like this, range, or you can generate number between a range 
range minimum and range max. We can use this formula. Let me put it here. But the wait time is an uh, integer, so we can uh, just cut off to the floating number, so the decimal point, decimal digits. Here we can put a number, say, int print time. Now this print time, we can put it here. We don't use this double. Now either we are divided as uh, integers, but uh, maybe it's a good idea to add these things. So let's say maximum uh, it need uh, ten ten seconds. But here this file sleep five seconds, so the minimum is five seconds. Ten minus five is five. So we can change this part to file. But with this number, the program becomes uh, not as readable as before. So the minimum print time will be 5 seconds, and the maximum print time will be 10 seconds. Print time. Okay, now you sleep. Uh, print time. And now uh, save it and compile and run it. Okay, it's uh, generated here. Can use the uh, for confirmation. Then run it. Okay, everything is done. And you can see God's printer is printing, God's printer is finished printing, and so on. Now, how could we uh, output? This one, some computer or thread is tired of waiting, wait time out. In this case, okay, this sleep function, it looks like it's not sleep for seconds, it sleep for milliseconds, the unit. We can find its unit, its explanation in the Windows API. The sleep function. You can see it's a unit, it's a milliseconds. So if we, we want to uh, sleep more, now it uh, sleep so 5 to 10 seconds. Now we times 1000. We convert from millisecond to a second. Compare and run it again. Have a look. Now you you will see those are some printers are printing. 
but we still see uh, all the threads finished the uh, finished printing. We didn't see any thread tied or weight, right? Because we have uh, five printers and ten computers. If you want to see some details, you can see uh, you can add something. Is printing for how long? Seconds. And you, if you want to see this one, that of waiting, you can change that waiting time to zero. Here is wait time. Change it to zero. This arrow means this type is long. We run it again. Now you see so many threads tired of waiting. Wait time out. Some thread. Print for five seconds. Finish printing, and so on. But you see so many uh, threads here because uh, we do print it it again and again. Right? Here you see this one two four six four two four six four. So if one thread here we, it still means it keep uh, uh, waiting. So in this case, if it's a title weight here, title weight, that weight should be turned to false. This uh, be continue. So we change be continue to false. Then we will not print out again and again. And that uh, logical is not right. Be continue equals false. This time you will see some computers will not complete their uh, printing job because they just left. See, you see, here we have four, we have five printer left, or file computer left, and a file here printing for 5 seconds, and finished uh, printing. Why is this all 5 seconds? We use a random number, why is it all file? Here right, we use this uh, random to generate, but it uh, all Give us uh, five seconds, which means uh, some place we made a mistake. We set here. We set the seed in the main function. After that, we call the joint function in each thread. Here we call this joint function in each thread. We get a file, so what's the problem happening here? It looks like this one gives us a zero. So that is a way to solve it. This rent, let's have a look what the value we get from this rent. It returns an integer from zero to this number. So we can use another way.
modulus uh, file. Now this time we will get a number from zero to uh, from zero to f to four. Now we use we use a modulus. So if we want to get a ten, so we can use six. Then we will get a random value from zero to five. And zero to five plus five, we will get a five to ten. But I, th I think that is a problem. Let's have a try. Here they all print for uh, 10 seconds. So it uh, looks like this uh, random function does not work as expected in multi threaded environment. So, for the reason why we get this uh, problem, you may uh, go, go online to search with Google. So, this is the first. Uh, program now the next program monitor dot cs you are asked to uh, compare these two rules here the first two could you find a problem the following six lines of code right one two three four five six these six lines Verify your guess by checking the program outputs carefully. Then change the sleep time to here. Currently, the sleep time is 1000. You change it to 100, then change it to 10, change it to 0, respectively. Compare and run to see the result. Check the output and uh, describe your observation one by one. So first is a uh, one thousand. We can compare it now for CSC. How do we specify the exe file name? We can ask for help here to see uh, which switch is used to specify the output file name. We go up to have a look. Resource input file, output files with this one specify the output file name. Otherwise, by default, it has the same base name of the file with the main class or first uh, file. So, with this dash out followed by the file name. So, in the first case, the sleep time is uh, 1000. We can compare it like this. Oops, we need to go to a that C sharp folder. Please pay to go to C sharp folder first. There are uh, wildfire that file is there. Monitor.cs. Then we compare it and uh, specify the output file name called a monitor one thousand. Exe. And you see a file is generated, right? Monitor 1000. Then we change the number. First, change to uh, 100. Ctrl S, save it. Then we compare it again. Here, say monitor 1000.exe. Then we change it to turn. Ctrl S, save it. Minus turn dot exe. Then we change it to zero.
Okay, you use DNR, you see a file x uh, four x cube files are generated. So now they run it and uh, have a look on the output. But as we just dis discussed, as we discussed during the lecture, here this program it create. It create uh, let's check the number ten create uh, ten tasks and each task use the random generator to generate ten thousand random numbers and we have two variable this total and this n this n is used to hold the total random numbers generated by all these uh, tasks and this total is hold the sum of all those random numbers so each thread will update these two variables so if the output and the update between the update and the output the thread slipped sometime then the number could be updated by other threads so you will see identical numbers output by several tasks as we discussed during the uh, lecture if there is no slip you will see the number in increased by 10,000 one by one you will see it so first let's do on this uh, monitor 1000 so you see those are uh, total number of generated random number 5000 5000 100000 100000 100000 and also you see the total sum and update the total sum all to the same number because before it output this result, it slipped for some time for uh, for one thousand. Uh, I think it's a millisecond. Again, we may need to uh, check this uh, stress slip. So it should be a millisecond. Otherwise, it cannot be uh, output so fast. It could not be a second. One thousand second. But now, for if it sleep for one hundred milliseconds, where we still see this kind of weird uh, result, we still see this weird result, eighty thousand, sixty thousand. But they are not weird because they are expected. Then how about ten? Uh, milliseconds here we still have this uh, problem now how about zero now for zero you see 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and also you see the total sum they are incremented one by one so this is the expected output of the program as we designed it so why do we get this result we already discussed because between the update and the output the thread the task slipped for some time and uh, during its sleep the result could be updated by other threads because they share this uh, these two variables uh, this is uh, a program part now let's come to this uh, review question part again we will use techniques as we uh, demonstrated in our last lecture first draw the Gantt chart next find the turnaround time then find, then find the waiting time Let's find the minimum average of any time. So again, we use a uh, word. 
or LibreOffice Writer. Yeah. To draw the Gantt chart and to find the, this result. Again, I want to create a table to draw the Gantt chart. So totally we have a P1 to P5 file, file processes. So how many columns do we need? The so rows we need uh, six because we need one title row. And all these uh, threads. For this uh, column, we need one for the process, the other one for the arrival time or priority. priority. We need to uh, add those, uh, since we each column, we will represent one time unit, so we can count how many time units we need. Here is 20, here maximum is 3, so 23 for, uh, for some uh, marking, we can use uh, 25. Again, let's uh, choose uh, those grid view. Okay, like this. The first one is the process. So we have uh, P1, P2, P3, P4. P5. Then we have time unit. So I would like to copy these things. First, the Gantt chart for the first come, first come and uh, first service. So uh, we are using this uh, legend, use the legend as the traffic, uh, uh, traffic signals. Red means uh, wait, and uh, green means run. And uh, nothing means uh, not come yet. So the order, the driving order, P2, P1, P4, P3, P5. So actually you based on the arrival time. You know the arrival time is P2, but we have two arrived at the same time, so we need to know which one is uh, first here, P1, P4. P1 is uh, in front of P4 and they arrived at the same time, then P3 arrived at 2, P5 arrived at 3. So for P2, here P2 first arrived, then it's a burst time is a file time unit. So it arrived, and the CPU is available, so file time unit,
and it's done. Oops, I want to set the cell background here. Then P2 is done. After P2 is done, then P1, right? P1 arrived at uh, time unit 1. So it need to wait until P2 complete. After P2 is done, oops, it's uh, P1, right? My bad, P1. So I need to... Uh, P2 is done, P1 arrived at time 1, and also P3 arrived at time 1. But P1 is in front of uh, or P4. P1 and P4. P1 is in front of P4. So we come to P1. You don't need to wait until P2 is done. Right. So wait. Then is P1's turn. P1's burst time is two. So two time unit. And P3 is arrived at the same time as uh, P1. Oh, sorry, P4. Here P4. You need to wait when P2 and P P1 is using the CPU. After P1 is done, then P4 can uh, use use the CPU. It uh, its burst time is eight time units. During this time, P P3 P3 arrived at time two. So P3, the driver at time 2, it has to wait until P4 complete its job. After P4 complete, then P3 can continue. Right? P3 is burst time is uh, 4 time units. And uh, P5, at time three, yeah, time three, you don't need to wait until its uh, previous one P three is done. Then P five can use the CPU. The first time is just one unit. Okay, this is the Gantt chart for the first come first service. Follow the order. P2 first, then P1, then P4, after P4, then P3, after P3, then P5. Here these uh, white cells means uh, the process didn't come yet. So the red or the wait time, the green or the work time, Together is the turnaround time. So with this Gantt chart, you can answer the sub question two, three, and four. But before that, let's uh, create all the Gantt charts as we demonstrated uh, last time. So we copy everything. The second one is
Short the remaining time first for the preemptive short the job first. Let's use this SRTF. SRTF means uh, sh short the remaining time first for the preemptive short the job first. For those jobs with the same job length, then we use uh, first come first service. Now it's a preemptive, which means those uh, jobs with a shorter job time, they can kick the job working on the CPU currently. Again, you follow this order. P2 comes first. Here, P2. It comes first. Currently, no one comes. Only P2. So, P2 can use the CPU. So, we... Make this as... Green. Now, at time 1, at time 1, P... P1 and P4 comes. Now you compare the job time. P1 is 2, P4 is 8. And P2, it uh, just uh, complete one time unit. It still need four time unit. So which one is the shortest one? P1 is the shortest one, right? P1 is only two time unit. So P1, we are use the CPU. Add uh, time unit one, so P1, we are use the uh, time unit and uh, P3, oh sorry, P4 has to wait. P4 has to wait. Certainly, P2 is kicked off from the CPU. Certainly, it has to wait as well. Now, at time two, at time two, P3 comes. At time two, here, time two, P3 comes. And P3 is a uh, Burst time is 4. So 4 is not the shortest one. Shortest one is still P1. Right? P3 is 4. So the shortest one is still uh, P1. So P1 continue. And uh, P2, we know it has to wait. P2 is still need uh, 4 time unit. Its remaining time is a 4 time unit. P3. P3 arrived at time 2, but it need to wait. And P4 certainly need to wait. Then at time 3, at time 3, P5 comes. P5 comes. This time, how many uh, threads are in still in the waiting queue? P1 is done, so we won't have P2, P3, P4, and P5. So P5, it has the shortest uh, burst time, just one. So P when P1 comes at time three, it will kick off, that it will take the CPU. So this P5 takes CPU for other threads, P2, P3, P4, they need to wait. Now, after P5 is done, we compare the uh, burst time or the remaining time of P2, P3, and P4. Which one is the shortest? We know P2, it remains 4. P3 is 4. P4 is 8. So, we have 2, P2 and P3, with the same burst time, 4. Then, we based on first come and first served. P2 is in front of P3, right? P2 is in front of P3, so P2 takes the CPU, need four time units. And uh, during this time, P3 and uh, P4 have to wait. Now after P2 is done, P3 and P4, the shorter will take the CPU. 
we know P3 is the need for time unit. is shorter than this uh, eight time unit. So need four time unit for this uh, P3. Then, but P4 still need to wait until P3 complete. After P3 complete, then P4 can use the CPU to complete its job. Here, we come to this place. Uh, this is uh, the Gantt chart for the shortest remaining time first. The next one, preemptive priority scheduling algorithm and a larger priority number implies a higher priority. And for those threads with the same priority, then we use a first come first service. So let's call this a PP priority, a preemptive priority scheduling algorithm called PP. Now this time, again, here, again, P2 comes first, right? P2 comes first. So P2 will use a CPU because nobody comes now. So P2 use a CPU. Then at time one, P1, P3, or P1 and P4 come. P1 and P4 come. And P2 is still inside, is taking the CPU, is still taking the CPU. Now we compare their priority. A higher number means the higher priority. Here, P4 is 4, P2 is 2, P1 is 3. So this P4 has the highest priority at time unit 1. So P4 will take the CPU. So P4 takes CPU. Meanwhile, P2 and P1 has to wait. Right? P2 is kicked off from the CPU. P2 need to wait. And P1 has lower priority than P4, so it also need to wait. Then at the time uh, unit two, at the time unit two, P3 comes. Here at the time unit two, P3 comes. P3 comes, but its priority is one. It's the lowest one, so P3 need to wait. So full still has the highest currently at the time uh, two. At the time two, it's clear P4 is still has the highest priority. And you s so P4 continue its job and uh, P1 and P2 has to wait. Now at time 3, P5 comes. At time 3, here time 3, P5 comes, but its priority is lower than P4. So P5 has to wait. So P4 will continue. Now, at time 3, we know the priority order of, of these jobs. P4 is priority 4, it has the highest priority, so it will continue and complete its job. P4 is first time is an 8 time unit, and for all others, has to wait. Now, if P4 is done, who has the next priority? It's P1. P1 has the next higher priority. It's 3. Right? So P1 will uh, do its job and uh, 2 time units. Yeah, 2 time units. After P1 is done, then we have P2 and P4, or P2 and P5 with a uh, priority. 
they have the same probability, but P2 is uh, in front of P5. So P2 will take the CPU. Now P2 is plus time is file. So P2 plus time is file, but when P1 is uh, taking the CPU, they all have to wait. So after P1 is done, P2 takes the CPU for five time units. Oops, P4 is already done here. P4, so P4 this, uh, P4 is already done. So we, it uh, left the ready queue. We know now P1 is uh, two time units already done. So we, at this time, we see uh, only uh, P2 here. P3, P3 and P5 here. P3 and P5 still need, need CPU time. When P2 takes the CPU, they need to wait. After P2 is done, now we only have P3 and P5. P3 and P5, P5 has a higher priority than P3. So P5 will take the CPU for one time unit. Here, for one time unit. And during this time, P3 has to wait. Now only P3 left. Right, only P3 is still in the red queue. What other threats complete their, their job? So P3 need four time units. Uh, P3 is done. Let, let's uh, double check this uh, scenario. At time zero, P2 comes. Nobody else, so P2 takes the CPU. Then at time one, at time one, we have uh, P1 and P4. So P1 and P4 and P2 or in the ready queue. And the highest priority is P4. So P4 complete all its job, take the CPU, and P1 and P2 has to wait. At times, at time two, P3 comes, but P3 has the lowest priority. It need to wait. So P4 continues. At time three, P5 comes. Right. Time three P5 comes, but P5 has a lower priority than P4, so P4 complete. And all other process have to wait. After P4 is done, the next one is P1. Based on this priority, yeah, the next one is three. So P1 two time units complete. All others need to wait. Or others in the waiting queue need to wait. P1 is done, then uh, P2 and P5. They have the same probability. P2 is in front of P5. So P2 will continue. File time unit. During this time, P3 and P5 need to wait. After that, P5 will continue. One time unit here. First time is one time unit. And uh, P3 has to wait. After that, P3 continues its job with a full time unit. So it looks good. I would like to save it here. Okay, now the Last scheduling algorithm, round robin. For this round robin, we know 
round robin is a cooperative scheduling algorithm. There's no preemption. Here P2 comes first and it uh, will use two time units. The quantum here, the quantum is uh, two or the time slice is two. So P2 will use it because P2 uh, is burst time is file. Now at time one, P1 and P4 comes. So they need to wait. P1 and P4 comes. But CPU is uh, currently using by P2, so they have to wait. At time two, at time two, uh, P3 comes. Here, at time two, P3 comes. But uh, P2 and P1 is in front of, in front of this P3. So who will be the next? P2, two times unit, it will come to P1, right? So the turn is uh, P1's. So P1 will use the CPU, and P1 is two time unit. So P1 is done. And uh, during this time, P2 has to wait. Certainly, uh, P4 has to wait. At time 2, we know P3 comes, so P3 also need to wait. Now, at time 3, P5 comes, but P5 is behind uh, all those uh, threads, so P5 ha has to wait. So after P1, P1 is two time units, it's complete. Then the next one is P4. So the next one is P4, two time units. When P4 is using the CPU, those threads still in the waiting queue, they need to wait. So P2, P3, P5 need to wait. Because P1 is what is it done? It has left. Then after P P4 is P3's turn, so P3's turn, two times unit, one quantum. So for all others still in the radical, they need to wait. Now after P3, the next one is P5. P5 only one time unit, so P5 is here, one time unit. So all others still in the red queue, they need to wait, right? Now, our P5 is done, who is the next? We know P1 already uh, left, come back here, it is P2. P2 stern. So P2 stern. Here come here P2. P2 stern. It need uh, two time units. And P2 still need a one time unit. When P2 is using the CPU or others, here P5 is already done and left. So only uh, P3 and uh, P4 still need to wait. Then we have only P2, P3, P4. After P2 is P4's turn, right? P4's turn here. P4, it still needs six uh, time units. Here, take its uh, quantum, and P3 need to wait. P2 also need to wait. P2, P3, they all need to wait. So after P4 is P3's turn, and P3 here, P3 is totally is four time unit. 
so p3 here p3 takes the cpu so p3 complete its job for p4 and uh, p2 they still need time unit so they need to wait when p3 is taking the cpu now after p3 again come back is p2's turn so p2's turn but this time p2 only need one time unit because total is five time unit it complete uh, four time units so it need only one time unit and during this time p3 need to uh, not p3 p3 already left right p3 at this time it already left p4 here p4 need to wait when p2 is taking the cpu now after p2 is done only p4 is is inside the red queue so p4 it still need four time units but uh, now only p4 is in the red queue so it take all these uh, time units so p4 is a uh, eight time unit p5 is one time unit p3 four time unit p2 is five time units p1 is two time units so this is uh, round robin first round robin which means each one takes turn to use the uh, time slice so we can double check this one p2 comes first then p1 and p4 and p1 is in front of p4 then p4 lp4 then uh, p3 lp3 then p5 p5 that one time unit then go back the p4 here after that is p4 p4 is here P5, then come to P2, P2, then uh, P2 comes P4 because P1 is already done. Right? You already always follow this order. Here P4, P4, then P3, P3, uh, then you come back again because P5 is already done. So it come to that one, you will get. P2, then follow this order, you come to P4 because P1 is already done. So, this is a Gantt chart for the round robin. Now, with this uh, Gantt chart, we can answer these uh, three questions. What's the turn around time for each process, for each of the scheduling algorithm? So I will show you just one of them because with the Gantt chart you can do all this stuff. So for this I I would like to uh, carry this round robin stuff to turn around time. To turn around time. Again, I want to emphasize this format does not satisfy the report requirement. So you need to follow the report template to organize this, uh, organize your solutions. Here, the turn around time, you need a calculation. So we need uh, the first columns, stress. The next column is a calculation, the last column is a result. So you can that like this process. Calculation and a result. There's a turn around time for the R R round robin scheduling algorithm p1 p2 p3 
P3, P4, P5. So the kernel runtime is the number of these red blocks and the green blocks. You just uh, add them together. For P1, is 1 plus 2. Right? You get 3. And for P2, you add these together. You can see here we have uh, 16, but it's uh, better show it. 2 plus here. How many red blocks? Seven red blocks plus two plus four red blocks plus one. So the total number will be sixteen. And for P three, add the red blocks blue blocks, the red blocks, the, uh, the green blocks. So how many do we have? It would be uh, 13. Then P5, P3, P4. P4 is uh, 3 red block, 2 green block, 5 red block, 2 green block, 3 red block, 4 green block. So how many do we have? We will have 10, 15, 19. And for this P file, here, file red blocks plus one green, we get six. So this is a turn around time for the round robin. Next one for the waiting time. For the waiting time, uh, Again, I use uh, one example to show it. So I think uh, I don't need to demonstrate anymore. The waiting time, you just uh, add those red blocks together for this uh, question three. Now for question five, you just uh, average those waiting time for each uh, processes as we have done in last lab. So you can do it by yourself. I will not demonstrate here. I just want to uh, check this uh, result. For example, this is Ronald Robin. You can check with the supplied reference uh, answer. But maybe there are some calculation error in this uh, reference answer. So you need to do it. Uh, if you found any uh, mistake in these results, uh, please let me know. Here, for example, the turn run time for the run robin, this column 1.2, right? We can compare the results here. This one, 3, here, this column, 3, 16, 13, 19, 6. So the result is right. It's, uh, it's identical to this column. So for others, you may compare yours with this uh, result. And here is the average uh, waiting time. And the, again, we get the result as our last uh, lab. The shortest remaining time first has the shortest uh, waiting time.